Okay, first I'd like to start off with a safety message, which uh, all the Goodyear team members that are here will be aware of. <laughs> Just uh, two safety messages, actually. Uh, one, if you are drinking, please don't drive home. Take a cab, figure out a sober uh, designated driver, get a room here. Uh, the other one is the ambassador asked that at uh, the end of my speech, uh, if you're going to give me a standing ovation, try not to stand on the chairs and tables and that, because it's, you know, you might fall and hurt yourself. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I really would love to have been able to memorize this, or at least read it and talk like this, but I know if I look at anyone, I'll probably end up crying, so <laughs> I'm probably just going to read it. Uh, so welcome again. I'm so happy that you've all come to be a part of Josh and Krista's big day. Many of you have traveled quite a ways to get here tonight. I think the farthest would be Krista's Grampy and Grandma Emily, who are sitting over there. And uh, they traveled all the way from PEI to be here. They left early uh, because of a huge storm <laughs> that's in PEI. So I'm really glad they made it here safe. Uh, but there are also many from Toronto, uh, Charlotte's aunt and cousins, and uh, also Trenton, quite a ways, uh, her parents and a bunch of other family members and that. So thank you all so much for coming. Uh, I really wish that my mom and Josh's mom could have been here tonight. Uh, I know they both would have loved being a part of your very special day. I hope that somehow they're both able to see how happy you are, how happy you two are right now. And Josh, this is for you. Charlotte and I would like very much to welcome you into our family, so welcome. Keep, make, keep making Krista at least somewhat as happy as she is today, and you should do all right. Remember this quote, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Krista, the uh, other 11 pages are for you. Uh, <laughs> This is the part of the father of the bride speech where I'm supposed to say that I am proud of you. And I am going to say that. But I'm also going to give some examples of why I'm so very proud of you. This is gonna be hard for me to get through without crying, so wish me luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so here's the definition of the word proud. Feeling deep pleasure or satisfaction as a result of one's own achievements, qualities, or possessions or those of someone with whom one is closely associated. So working my way backwards, I will start with tonight. I am proud of you for planning this wedding and looking so beautiful tonight. I am proud that you gave your mom and me the most adorable grandson. That's John, uh, <laughs> Gage, and he's clapping. That's good. <laughs> but I am really looking forward to watching Gage grow up. I know that we are going to have a lot of fun over the many years to come. You have become an amazing nurse. You had a bit of a hard time with college, but you stuck with it where many, many others would have quit. I am so proud that you stuck with it, and now you are an amazing RPN. I am proud of so many things that you did during your high school years and your grade school years. Two things during this time really stand out though. You made a Remembrance Day poster that was so good, it won and was displayed in the Kingston Legion. Also art related, in grade school, you painted a picture of a heart that was so good, not only did it win best painting in your school, it also beat out many other schools and got to be displayed in the Kingston Hospital with other winning paintings from all over Ontario, I believe. A lady actually asked if she could buy it because she loved it so much. She wouldn't meet my asking price of a million dollars, and this is true. So it is proudly hanging on a wall in our house. Also during your younger years, you were involved in different dance classes for about 10 years and horseback riding lessons for a couple of years. Every year you would get to dance in the year-end dance recital. I am proud to say that you never screwed up any of your dances during a recital, or at least you didn't mess up as bad as some of the other kids, so I'm sure no one noticed if you did mess up. 
During one of your horseback riding lessons, you got bucked off of your horse. I'm glad I wasn't there for that lesson, or I might have had to give that horse a reason for having a long face. <laughs> now, for those of you that laughed at that, thank you. Uh, for those of you that groaned at that, thank you. For those of you that said nothing, here I'll explain it. For years, uh, probably over a hundred times, I've told a joke to both Corey and Krista when they were little, and still do occasionally. A uh, horse walks into a bar, the bartender says, why the long face? It's one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I was proud that you got back up on that horse and continued with your lessons for the rest of that year. When Krista was four or five, she played soccer for only one year. But man, was that ever a good year. I was the coach and she was the little girl that played defense and was somewhat more interested in looking for four-leaf clovers and picking dandelions <laughs> than playing the game. I will never forget the game where we got to take a penalty kick. <laughs> it was up to the coach to pick a kid to take the shot and just about every kid had their hand up saying, pick me, pick me. I'm pretty sure all of the kids on the team and all of their parents watching knew that I would pick our star player who was bigger, stronger, and faster than every other kid on the team and who scored most of our goals. But, I guess they didn't know me too well, I picked Krista to take the penalty shot. Yeah, I had some kids pissed off at me and I had some parents shaking their heads thinking, yeah, sure, pick your kid, who cares if we win the game. Corey, who was actually a, a really good soccer player, happened to be the referee during this game. So he placed the ball on the field in front of the net and gave Krista some advice. I think he said something like, don't miss the ball and try not to miss the net. <laughs> Krista got all lined up, ran towards the ball and kicked it hard and high and scored. I bet you could have heard me cheering and clapping a mile away. The whole team ran out to congratulate her. This isn't even the part I'm supposed to cry at. <laughs> uh, yeah, the whole team ran out to congratulate her, and I lifted her high as we all celebrated. Yes, we did win the game, but at that moment, I was so happy that I really didn't care if we won or not. It's going to be bad. Uh, I've actually I've told that story probably to a hundred people over the years and never cried, but, uh, but anyhow, wait, that's not all. Oh, I'm shaking up here. I need another double rum and coke. The very first time I was ever proud of Krista was when Krista was a newborn baby only seconds old. She decided to come two weeks early. During the rush to the hospital, the 29 hours of labor, and right up to the actual birth, we still didn't know why she decided to come two weeks early. Just seconds after she was born, the doctor said to us that the umbilical cord was tied in a knot and it was wrapped around her neck. The doctor then said it was a miracle that she lived and that she must have been starving. That is why she came out early and that was the first time I was proud of my beautiful little girl. Oh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> oh. Krista, over your 24 years, you've been a sister, a granddaughter, a great-granddaughter, a niece, a great-niece, a cousin, a friend, a co-worker, an aunt, a girlfriend, a mother, a fiance and now a wife and although I'm sure you were great and still are great at being all of these things you were by far the best at being my daughter but wait that's not all <laughs> and I actually have here uh, written down in brackets and if I haven't cried yet I'm probably gonna so uh, this is harder than I thought it would be uh, You could probably edit out some of this. Uh, 
Okay. Over the years, over the years, I have wanted many different things. Many, many times I have hoped for things, and many, many times I have wished for things. I have even begged for some things, right, Cher? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> In fact, I've probably begged for more things than I wanted. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, there are only a few things that I've actually prayed for, and having a healthy, happy baby girl was one of those prayers. God not only answered that prayer, he surpassed it in many ways that I couldn't have even imagined. So Krista, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being you. That's it. Uh, so if everyone can stand. That was really hard to do. <laughs> Go grab a drink. <laughs> this is to my daughter, Krista. Thank you for being here. Cheers. <laughs>